the glory, give him worship. He is a covenant keeping God. Can somebody, you know, when we say praise him, hope we just start with the first word. God will help you with the rest. Go ahead and say things. Things you know God will love you to say. Thank you. Thank you for being a covenant keeping God. Thank you for your mercies and your love. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for the way you've kept us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Alamato saka parada shaka bara la bataka sapa. Elemeneke soto kola malere demeneke sete bakaloga dila badala baya. Ema mama kosko patos kapala kotase kalinga. Eshota la kaparada la badaya. Lift your voice and give him thanks. Nana natasa kitola kitola makila taya. Ele kapora badala kapata la kapara la gabadala badabaya. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lift your voice and say, We say, Father, in the name of Jesus, according to your word, I position myself in this half of the year to recover all. All I have lost during the pandemic, all I have lost in previous years, in this year of fruitfulness in the land. I recover all. I recover all. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray that prayer right now. Lord, we recover all. We recover all. In this year of fruitfulness, we recover all. Everything we lost in the lockdown, everything we lost, we recover in the name of Jesus. By your word and by your spirit, according to your promises, we recover in the name of Jesus. We recover in the name of Jesus. We recover in the name of Jesus. Thank you for grace to recover. Thank you for the wisdom to recover. Thank you for strength to recover. Thank you, Lord, for grace to recover. Laba, laba, laga, di limandele botele mani katalabala. O la kapa la talika tapa la karala tabasakaya. In Jesus' mighty name. I would have said hold hands with somebody now. Because it helps you pray. Now lift your hand to heaven. And say, Father, on this journey to total recovery, give me strategies. Give me strategies. Give me wisdom. Give me the know-how for total recovery. Somebody pray that prayer on the top of your voice. Father, in the name of Jesus, on this journey to total recovery, Lord, I receive strategies. Lord, I receive know-hows. Lord, I receive wisdom. Lord, I receive grace for total recovery. In the name of Jesus, nothing shall be missing. Nothing shall be broken. Lord, grace for total recovery. Grace to recover everything. Grace to recover all. In the name of Jesus. Nothing lost. Nothing lost. Nothing lost. In the We recover all, all in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's pray lastly. Lift your hands and say, Father, every hindrance to my total recovery, in the name of Jesus, I overcome them. I uproot them. There shall be no hindrance, no stumbling block to my total recovery. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray the prayer. Every hindrance to my total recovery, every stumbling block, I command it to be uprooted. I command it to be uprooted. I command it to be uprooted. I command it to be removed from my way. In the name of Jesus, there shall be no satanic hindrance. There shall be no satanic hindrance. No human hindrance. No circumstantial hindrance. No human stumbling block. No circumstantial stumbling block. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
Jesus. Zapata kabala kata la kabada la kataya. Ele briko te si kabali kabili kitu zaya. Ele keprados kapala mahayana. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands and give him thanks. Bless his name. Bless his name. Most high God of heaven, most high ruler of the earth, most high king of nations, oh, I live. Father, for giving us the privilege of gathering at your feet. We ask in the name of Jesus that the heavens over us will open. You pour out your blessing. Let your word come like rain and soak us like the dew. May we receive word from you that will change our lives. Reposition us and realign us with your will and purposes. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. That amen can sound better. Give the Lord a big hand as you take your seat. We're in our third day of the fast. The fast continues. And this is the third day of the fast. And um, the fast is part of our conference. Our, it's our media conference, actually. The fast is, makes up our media conference. Those of you who have been attending, you know. Uh, how many of you have been attending? You, you know the level of word that God has been bringing to us. We've been talking about recovery strategies. And I really want to encourage all of us, particularly our leaders, to make it physically here, to encourage the rest. Make it, I, want, I don't want to believe our leaders have any fear for anything, all right? Make it physically here, including the leaders who are watching me now online. I sack you from online. Come offline or on land and watch and be a part of it because you have work to do in the course of the services. The Lord bless you. We've been talking about recovery strategies and yesterday and day before yesterday was really awesome. And God taught us quite a lot. Some of the things we never really particularly knew like that. 
And so I see God teaching us even greater things. I was tempted to teach recovery strategies today, but we have a theme to take care of. So we'll just go ahead with that so that we can mature. We can do what? We can mature and grow, be strong, be solid, be solid people. Don't forget, the fast continues tomorrow. It is 6 to 3. If you don't feel okay with 6 to 3, take it to 6. It's just three hours difference. All the way to Sunday. And then we continue again 6 to 6, Monday, Wednesday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then next week, Sunday, is the grand finale of our um, media conference, which is the Blessing Summit. Is what? The Blessing Summit. I've not seen our artists or media graphics guys do anything about it. I'm surprised. I've not seen any publicity. Hallelujah. All right. So today we're talking about the worst kind of stumbling blocks. The worst kind of stumbling blocks. The worst kind. We'll talk about, look at various kind and then narrow in on the worst kind. Matthew chapter 11 verse 2 to 6. Matthew chapter 11 verse 2 to 6. Now, when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached unto them. Read the last line, everybody. One to go. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Read it again. One, two, go louder. Blessed is he whosoever shall not be. I need it loudest. One, two, go. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Hallelujah. There are all kinds, there are many kinds of offenses or stumbling blocks rather. Uh, let's talk about the stumbling blocks. There are many kinds of stumbling blocks. But there is a stumbling block of the worst kind. And they are doctrinal stumbling blocks, for instance. Let's say number one. Doctrinal stumbling blocks, uh, such as the Jews and the Greeks had. They had their own stumbling block. You will see in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 to 23, when uh, Paul was talking about them, he said, Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Now, see verse 22. He says, for the Jews require a sign. We're talking about doctrinal stumbling blocks now. The Jews require a sign. The Greeks seek after wisdom. But see verse 23. Read 23 loud. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews is what? A stumbling block. And to the Greeks is foolishness. So wherever Jesus is mentioned to a typical Jew, he is offended. He is, that is a stumbling block for them. How dare you say Jesus is the son of God? Where, since when did God start having a son? So the Jews particularly stumble at that fact that Jesus is the son of God. That's a problem for them. They, they agree to everything in the Bible, but the only problem they have is Jesus, the who Jesus says he is. That's why when he was here, they tried many times to stone him and all that. You will see in the book of Romans chapter 9, verse 31 to 33, something similar again. Still talking about doctrina, stumbling blocks. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, has not attained unto the law of righteousness. They followed the law of righteousness until today. They have not yet attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith. They didn't go after it by faith. But as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at the stumbling stone. And what is the stumbling stone? See the next verse. As it is written, behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. And whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. What, so the stumbling stone is a person. And who is the person? Jesus Christ. He said, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone. Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. That's where the Jews have a problem. They would have accepted the New Testament if Jesus was not there. Hallelujah. So the Jews have believed everything, you know, uh, you know, and, uh, and they stumbled at the thought of everything else. But they stumbled at the thought of the fact that Jesus Christ is the son of God. You read the, old, the, the gospels, you see how they fought with him on that matter. 
So, um, uh, there are also cultural stumbling blocks. That's what they call cultural stumbling blocks. Where cultures don't agree. You know, we are both Christians. But because of cultural differences, we stumble. We are offended. You get the point? People who just hate the way of life of a certain people. They don't just agree with how those who live their lives. That's cultural stumbling block. Hallelujah. There is also ethnic or racial stumbling blocks. Ethnic or racial stumbling blocks. Many times it has something to do with history. Either the wars of the past or slavery of the past. How the whites subjected the blacks to slavery. And, and, and there's some pretentious manifestation of it in America right now. Where the people they call BLM, Black Lives Matter, go around pulling down statues and are causing mayhem and chaos. They've been killing children. They, 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 their own black children in the name of demonstration and all that. They become rioters and looters and, and anarchists in the name. All that is because those people they call BLM, they show up only during election. When election is coming, they use them. May God deliver black people from being used. Used stupidly and foolishly. Hallelujah. So those kind of history, you know, have a lot of effect. There was war between this family and that family. All kinds of things. Those are what you call ethnic and racial uh, stumbling blocks. Till today, the Igbos have issues with the houses. There's, it's there because of the, his, the mayhem, the massacre of the Igbos then. And the, and the houses will tell you that the, 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 um, uh, the first coup was plotted by an Igbo man. <laughs> Is it Ezogu? <laughs> Ezogu who plotted the coup and killed. And, you know, the coup was not even about the Igbos, but that's how the houses interpreted it. You know, and so on. You know, history. May God help us with history in Jesus' name. If you can't read history, watch documentary. At least it will, it will update you. Go to, don't be using your Google, your, your, your data to watch nonsense. Like the Yoruba say, nonsense. Watch things that will educate you. Uh, your DSTV has all manner of discoveries now. Watch them. It will, it will improve your, your life and so on and so forth. So, but the worst kind of stumbling block is that of offense. That's the worst kind, the worst kind of stumbling block. Primarily because there had to be, there had been prior relationship between the parties involved. There had been what? Prior relationship between the parties involved. And there had been closeness and trust. Number one, prior relationship. Number two, closeness. There have been closeness and trust before. And number three, they, they, uh, as such, there were also high expectations. When you relate to somebody at a certain point, there are certain things you expect that the person should not do. There are certain things you expect the person should do. And that was the case of John the Baptist and Jesus Christ, having met themselves at Jordan, having known themselves in the spirit. And now you hear that I've been in prison. Shouldn't you look for how to bring me out of prison? Yet, yet you are going around doing everything. Don't I matter again to you? Don't I matter in the scheme of things? All kinds of things begin to cook up in the mind of John. Listen, the anatomy of offense is this. It's the inability to correctly interpret actions. The inability to correctly interpret actions. And so your own interpretations and conclusions of actions can go so deep and go so terrible that you even go to the point of murder. Because you have already sat down with yourself and concluded that this is why this person did what he did. It's because I don't have money. <laughs> like I hear some people in church. May the Lord rebuke that your mouth. That say, eh, because I don't have money in this church. What are you here for? Are you not here so you can be rich? Don't you have purpose in your life? <laughs> when I hear this, the way poor people talk. Even if you are poor, don't talk like a poor person. Who said you are poor? I used to hear some of those things, you know, it's not much, but I heard, you know, uh, it's because I don't have money in this church. Yeah? Haven't you heard people who come without money, who now have money? Won't you plan your own? So don't go. <laughs> Dirty mouth, leave me. <laughs> if you are such a person, when you reach home, say this mouth, you will not put me in trouble. Just go, go to the mirror and talk to your mouth. Hallelujah. Somebody shout Hallelujah. Who is, ah, I said somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I didn't say say it. I said you should shout it. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Never be caught among the poor. You may not have money. doesn't mean you are poor. 
Are you poor? I may not even have transport to go back, but I'm not poor. I've never, since I gave my life to Jesus, I've never considered myself poor. And that's a, that's a mentality matter. I've so drank the word of God to the point, I don't have poverty mentality. I can't even be poor. How will the poverty come? Where will it work? Glory to God. When I'm doing my best to obey the word of God, to do the things that I ought to do, somebody shout hallelujah. So stumbling block, that's, that's the that's thing about stumbling block. The, the, just that, the, you know, uh, the reality of your expectations of people don't always come to pass. Those expectations don't always come. So, just like I taught on Sunday, but I was talking in terms of marriage. Reality, expectations versus reality. At the end of the day, your expectations will jam reality. And when the reality hits you, humble yourself and learn. And get better understanding about the reality. So, we are supposed to prepare our hearts for all kinds of offenses at all times. Tell somebody, prepare your heart. Where the thing is a challenge is that the offense took you by surprise. It took you by surprise. You were shocked. You're not supposed to be shocked. You're not supposed to be taken by surprise. Surprise is not good when it comes to offense. It's good to be prepared and manage your heart. Because the Bible said it is not possible for offense not to come. Offenses will always come. Okay? Offenses can come from any quarters and anyone. <laughs> this one will be interesting. Offenses can come from where? Any quarters and from anyone, anyone, anyone. Guess what? Offenses have come from God. People have been offended with God <laughs> through a force. As perfect as God is, they are offended with him because he didn't do what they expected him to do. So the offense is not because God offended. It's because you, don't, you didn't interpret God's actions properly. I don't know if I'm making sense now today. Glory to God. I said glory to God. This series is supposed to mature you. Listen to me. I don't care how mature you appear. I've seen people who hold the word of God and they teach, teach and dismantle to people. They teach people shout, hey. They teach people fall under the anointing. When it comes to offense, they mess up like babies. Are you getting what I'm talking about today? I've seen people who can pray. Ah, yeah. Oh, when they pray, you say, oh, Jehovah, when will I pray like this? But let offense hit them. They just collapse like a pack of cards. You see the worst kind of immaturity. Ah, uh -uh, brother, are you not the one again? Because, you see, maturity is not something that happens naturally. You must intentionally mature yourself. It has to be intentional. You have to play, pay close attention to your spiritual development. Because the test of spirituality is not in how you lift up your hand during worship and frown your face. Then shake your leg. And they, people now er erroneously conclude you as Jim Jim. You know Jim nothing. Talk less of a second Jim. Did you hear what I said? Where your maturity is revealed is in offense. That's where people are shaken. That's the truest test of Christianity. Christianity is not known by your tongues. It's not known by the scriptures. All that. Jesus said they are leaves. Remember the leaves. It was full of leaves. But when he went, he didn't see what? The fruit. Eh? He didn't see the fruit. It is the fruit that will distinguish you in your Christian life. Because they buy their fruits. You shall know them. When I teach people about getting married, I say God can reveal to you somebody who the, the, the right person by the peace of God in your heart. That's how you know the right person. He can reveal to you by revelation. He can reveal to you. <laughs> you know now, all the various ways you know who we are supposed to marry. But when you go and find out that the person lacks fruit, the person has character issues, no matter how many revelations you had, carry your kaya. Say, Lord, I'm coming back to the drawing board to hear where. I don't know what I heard before. Don't marry what you don't understand. I don't care how many revelations you had. It is by their fruit that you know them. And be willing to agree that you can make mistakes in your hearing from God. Stop saying, I know, I know, I know it. When the Lord speaks to me, I know it. Stop that nonsense. <laughs> 
you see somebody has given, he has flung the first hand and, and missed. He was going to give you back hand. He missed. So, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't even know when my hand flung. Ha, and you are still there. Thou art mumu. Thou art mumu. The worst type. Uh -uh. <laughs> Somebody has, so the lady you say you want to marry, she has just given you one mouth. How many of you know mouth? There is a mouth they give you, you know when tears came out of your eyes. <laughs> and, and he said, if not because I love you, I, I'm honestly, I'm blocking the Lord only. You need to be broken yourself. Somebody need to break your leg. That mouth, you know, you know there is more mouth where that one came from? When you now marry, can you stand the remainder of the mouth? Somebody has not married you and look at you, look at you, look at you. You are such a despicable material. Eh? That's how all your, all your family are. And you are still going. Don't marry what you can't manage. Because oh. that same person who received all that abuse as a cutting couple. When they now marry, he said, I don't know what I'm doing. I want to divorce. You didn't, you didn't disengage. You want now want to divorce. You will not. Stay there. For you to divorce, you must gather all of us that were there that day. Cook another fresh rice. We must eat the same rice we ate. The same stew. <laughs> then you can now begin to arrange the divorce as we finish eating. Get the same pastor. And if it's me, I will not be around because I would have traveled to the U.S. for a program. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who would have expected that uh, Jesus would be an offense to John the Baptist? Who would have expected that? That John the Baptist would consider Jesus Christ an offense. Mm -hmm. Who would have expected that? Tell us what you prepare your hearts for offense. For all kinds of offense. Offense can come from any quarters. We said it can come from flawed people, flawed people. People are flawed. That's not everybody. Every human being is flawed. They have their challenge, their weaknesses. They, they, there's nothing you can do about it. They themselves have not done something about it. Is it you? Human beings are flawed. Permanently flawed. Almost always, all the time. So offenses come from flawed people. And it can come from perfect or near perfect people. Come from perfect people. That one is usually the worst. The person you, ne you never thought. The person you would consider like a little angel. You consider like God is the one that then causing this kind of offense. Yeah. So that's it. That's why John could be offended with perfect Jesus. Perfect Jesus. Perfect Jesus. So there are people that are offended even with God. As perfect as God is. God is still offending them. One woman told God. Why are you spoken in the Bible? Why are you silencing me? I call you. No evil answer. Is it because I love you? He says, because I don't have any other place to go that you are doing this to me. What a woman. She must be a good woman. He said, God, please answer me. Oh. And so on. Hallelujah. It's just, people just have issues with God. So, in our text, John the Baptist was caught in a situational stumbling block. He was caught in what? A situational stumbling block with Jesus Christ. He had been caught in a controversy. He found out that this Herod married his brother's wife and John... It's good to stick to, tell, tell someone to stick to your calling. <laughs> stick to your calling. So he went and, and he didn't prophesy, or rebuke Herod. And Herodias, which is the woman in, in, the, in the controversy, was very, very angry. Don't joke with a woman's anger. Especially the one that does not know God. Till you die, you will not know. Praise the Lord. <laughs> There is a woman in this state whose husband was in a prominent position in this state. She was offended, supposedly, by one of our sons here, one of our members. She decided to carry a, a, a convoy of police. They came to church, but everybody had gone. How, how they, I don't know which fool gave her my house address. And she, they drove in a convoy, several policemen, to my house. Bombarded my parlor. 
I was sleeping the sleep people sleep after hard work. After you have eaten. How many of you will work hard? You now eat. The next thing. You know, even if you are watching the TV, the TV will end up watching you. I slept. They ran to me. Daddy, daddy, daddy. The children were so scared. Daddy, daddy, police, police. Ah, I jumped up with my nika and my um, polo. Saw policemen with guns in the parlor. With one tiny woman. He said, are you so, so, so person's pastor? I say, yes. See, sleep was doing me. Because if I was normal, I would say, get out of my house now. That's what I should have done. Get out now. I will spray you insecticide. Get out now. Since I don't have gun. <laughs> it's not good to wake up from sleep and see situation. Because... <laughs> Why? She asked the young man, who is my husband's girlfriend? She said, the man said, I don't know. That was the offense. You are his peer, how would you know? You are connecting with him to have girlfriend. Do you know that came stormed my house and said, I should warn him. This, this, this. His wedding was to be that week Saturday. By Thursday, the young man was in prison. For what? Our police, eh? Matwa Calabra de policemen. You carry a person and put in cell. For what? What is the charge? I went to the police station. Fought for his release. And so on and so forth. Thursday was in, you are going to wed on, on Saturday. By Thursday you are in the, you are in the police station. Wicked woman. Nikala Kabrule Tazaya Fire. Interpret it and go and tell her. That one, that one, that one. I'm still angry. Mato kosola kayantwa. Zuzu sutunus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Where was I? <laughs> what a nonsense. So Herodias got angry. Herod, has got angry and did what? Began to plot against John. Herod took him, put him in prison because he still respected John. He used to listen to John's preaching. And John stayed there, waited for one day, two days, one week, two weeks, three weeks. Ah, even here, that you hear that. Who are those making noise? Say Jesus that is passing. He's passing near this prison. He said, he called his disciples that used to come around and stay in the window of the prison. He said, go and meet Jesus. When you go there, ask him, two of you, tell him. Are you the one that is to come? Or are we expecting another person? Because the way you are behaving, you're not behaving like Messiah. Because that word, is a, that, that, that word was not just a, a word of offense and, and lack of belief and loss of faith. It was insultive. It was, it, it was, you see, when you are offended, what come out of your mouth, you can't control it. Are, 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 are you the one who supposed to come? Is that how people that, that they call Messiah behave? Haven't you seen the history of Messiahs? And John sent to ask this question in the public. This is John who is a foreigner. This is John that Jordan went to meet in the wilderness. This is John that everybody, in fact, people were wondering if he was the Messiah. His job was to make the way for the Messiah. He was to preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And when Jesus came, Jesus continued from where John stopped, preaching the same message. So he was a foreigner to make Jesus walk easy. And this is John doubting Jesus. Heaven conveyed an emergency meeting. He said, this route John is taking will spoil the plan of salvation. If these people stop believing in Jesus... There will be a problem. John is a strong figure. I said this to someone in Maryland, to a pastor, a woman of God, Maryland. She said, no, God could have still used anybody. And I said, I didn't answer her because I don't, I don't like arguing scriptures. Listen, it had to be John because it was prophesied in the Old Testament that it was going to be John. So what did heaven do? Convey the major meeting. Any application for his death granted. Anybody who shows interest now in his life, confirm. So the woman said, I want the head of John the Baptist in a charger. Approved. 
Why? John, by his action, has made his tenor expire. If he's allowed to send another message to Jesus in that public manner, by the mouth of two or three, a matter is what? They could have considered the first one a mistake, not the second one. So John was offended. That's why he says the worst kind of offense is the worst kind of stumbling block. The worst kind. He thought Jesus would be the one to deliver him. But maybe Jesus was not the one. Maybe he was to be there like Paul the apostle and make him part in the house of Herod. Because Paul stayed in prison and wrote all the letters, all the epistles that we read. read. If Paul was not in prison, he would be preaching. But while in prison, he wrote. And those letters became part of the, uh, the holy scriptures. Hallelujah. But not John. Let me jump and uh, let me jump and close by giving us some wisdom. Wisdom to have in order to overcome stumbling blocks of offense. Number one, deal with all forms of grief and ask the Lord to take away every grievance from your heart against spiritual authority figure. And in fact, against anybody, especially spiritual authority figures. Listen, if God has put somebody as a spiritual authority figure over your life, and for whatever reason, you're offended with the person, you block flow from the person to you. You block the flow, and that's very not good. Very, very dangerous. Okay, you don't want to do that. You block the flow. Always know you don't know all the facts. Did you hear what I said? You don't know all the facts about the matter for which you are offended. So put yourself like somebody who still has a lot more to know and learn. So you don't put yourself as a Lord. You know everything. It's because of this that he did this that she did. Mm -mm. Don't do that. Because eventually it may take years. You'll find out the real truth. But you would have caused a whole lot of harm already. Number two, where necessary, make an approach of such authority figure for clarifications of any kind of pending matter. Just, just make approach for clarifications. Uh, you know, this is what I heard. I just want to know whether it's true. I just thought I should ask you uh, and all that. Make that approach. It will save you a whole deal, a lot of trouble. Find a way. If you can't meet the person personally, make a phone call. Send a text. Okay? Somebody told me about one of us in church that he had left church. I said, uh -uh. why? Is it because of so and so? So I waited after some time. I, made, I put a call through to him and I said, uh -uh. And, I, I, and I made a mistake. I should have asked him, have you left church? But what I said was, I hear you have left church. Uh -uh, shouldn't you even tell me, at least talk with me about it? He said, Pastor, let me call you back. <laughs> he didn't call me back. Then he called me another day. He said, Pastor, after you made that call through to me, I had an accident. Because I was shocked. I was very shocked to hear that. He said, Pastor, after all you have taught me, I will behave like that. That's what he said. I said, sorry. Uh -uh. The sources I heard it from sounded so solid and confirmed by your absence. But meanwhile, he was going to school. He was taking some courses. Are you getting the point now? So don't be conclusive. Rather, do things in an inquiry manner. The people that have gone because they told them in a prayer house that their mother is winch. They just go. They've not asked the mother, I've heard the winch. They just go straight. And they say, I don't know. That you will tell them you didn't see me. Tell them, I've been seeing you've been coming like Vulture and Canary. One person, Vulture and Canary at the same time. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Guess what? Try not to believe the things you hear till you confirm them. Try not to believe them till you confirm them. Number three, learn to make enough room in your heart for offenses. I'll stop here today. Learn to make enough room in your... We'll take you to the next level in the next service. Learn to make enough what? Room in your heart for offenses. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody talk to him. Give him thanks for the word we've just received. Give him thanks. Never look at anybody so perfect and think offense cannot come from them. It can come from them intentionally or unintentionally. It can come from them directly or indirectly. It can come consciously or unconsciously. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice. 
to worship you, oh my soul, rejoice, take joy. For somebody today that needs to make peace with God. I want to pray for somebody that needs to be born again. You need Jesus in your life. Maybe you're a backslider. You want God to restore you. You're saying, Pastor, I need, I, I need to start afresh. Too many things have happened. Too much water has gone under the bridge. And you want to begin all over. Whichever category you belong. Please bow your heads and pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus. With all my heart, I repent of my sin. I repent of my errors. I repent of my mistakes and my backsliding. Father, forgive me. I thank you for dying on the cross for me. For taking my place on the cross of Calvary. I receive you today into my life as my Lord and my personal Savior. And I ask that you wash me with your blood. Remove my name from the book of death. Write my name in the book of life. I vow by your grace that I will serve you for the rest of my life. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. You just prayed that prayer and you meant it from your heart. Can you just wave your hand at me? Let's confirm it. Anybody, you prayed the prayer just now. Let me see the hand. The devil won't make you not take this one last step. But what you start, believe God to finish it. One more time, you prayed the prayer. Let me see the hand. Nobody like that. Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet. Mm, take joy, my King. In what you may it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Lift your two hands, everybody, and pray this prayer. We say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive from you. I say, lift up the two hands you are holding it. I receive from you. Grace to handle offenses, to manage offenses. Wisdom, Lord, give me wisdom to know how to go about it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I frustrate every attempt of Satan to cause me to stumble. In the name of Jesus, by your blood, by your word, and in your name, I refuse to stumble. I will stand. I will manifest maturity in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Give the Lord a big hand, everybody. That hand can be better than that. Give the Lord a big hand.